Hey everybody and welcome back. Well, we have an exciting video today. We have another artist that sent in work for review and that's exactly what we're going to do today. All right, let's jump in. Here we go. Okay, everybody, well, we're in Photoshop right now. I loaded up an image that you probably recognize if you have anything to do with animation or ever have dealt with animation. This is a picture out of the book by Richard Williams, and the book is called The Animator's Toolkit, uh, Survival Toolkit, I believe. Uh, I'll put a link below if you want to get this, and if you don't have it, you should, because this is basically the Bible as far as I'm concerned when it comes to animation, okay? All right, so what are we doing today? We're gonna to do an artist review for uh, Danielle Boxil. I uh, truly hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, she is a student at Huntington University in Indiana, and she has asked me to do so. Now, before I get into this, um, a little disclaimer here. Um, people that know me know I typically don't do character stuff. I am a props modeler, rigger, and animator. So I do do a lot of character work, uh, so I am not a specialist in this uh, field here. Uh, I have an opinion about it, of course, but this review is going to be based on my personal opinion. So not as uh, you know, an authority in the field or anything like that, my personal opinion, okay? And you can agree or disagree, that's totally fine. Uh, but I hope it's helpful for Danielle. All right, so uh, I put this image up here to give you an idea of a typical walk cycle. In this case, a very typical male walk cycle as uh, uh, shown in the book. And what you see here is you have a very clear contact pose with uh, a lot of distance between the feet, one toe up, one heel up. You have a movement downwards as the front foot is planted down to kind of shift that weight to the front leg. Then on the passing pose, you see that the body starts to move up. The weight is straight on top of, in this case, the right leg. And as the body moves forward, it's kind of a controlled way of falling over. As you can see, um, the uh, left of the, the foot behind, the right foot is pushing up and you can see the head in this case following kind of an S curve, right? Now, depending on how the character is walking here, whether it's a male or a female, you will see a very different uh, flow there. A female walk cycle typically is kind of uh, like walking a rope on the floor where a female would put one foot straight in front of the other and you would see the head be much more level in the walk cycle, okay? Now, are these very, typical, uh, very stereotypical assumptions? Yes, they are, but we're talking about animation here, okay? So let's have a look and see what Danielle sent in. And here we go. And I received four very, very short clips. Um, the whole thing, I think four uh, clips together is nine seconds. So I'll just play it once so you can see. So a female walk cycle from the side, one from the front that freezes after about two seconds, a middle walk cycle, and a middle walk cycle. That's it. So that's all I have to work with, but that's okay. We'll just get started. Now, first of all, looking at the initial walk cycle here of the female, and I'll just hit play once again. Very, very small and tiny movements. You see that there's not a lot going on there. Um, the head is not moving up and down vertically at all, although the walk cycle is not as I uh, mentioned, and I'll show you in the front here. One foot is not placed directly in front of the other, it's next to the other. Now, although the legs are very close to each other, you still don't see that happening, right? Now, what I like about this here is you see the head going side to side and the chin moving somewhat. A very natural flow, I like that. The hands are a bit rigid. They look a little bit like mittens because the fingers are stretched, the thumb is stretched out, and I would probably try to uh, curve the fingers maybe a bit or do that randomly, so have a few curved inwards, maybe tuck that thumb in, and rotate the hands a little bit more on the forward motion, right? So people tend to swing their arms around and in front of them to kind of emphasize that walk, right? Now also, if you go back here, uh, whenever you're in a walk cycle and you see, for example, a, let's see, we see a right leg going forward, you will see a counteraction of the shoulders. 
So if the right foot goes forward, the right hip goes forward. So basically your uh, hip is, your, your pelvis is rotating, favoring the foot that's moving forward. And as a counterweight, your shoulders are rotating in the other direction because the uh, arm um, that is uh, correlated to the leg going forward will typically swing back. So I'll try to show you here. Okay, so here we have the character's right leg going forward and right arm going backward. That's what I mean, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So there you go. Okay, so let's see what else. We'll play this again. Uh, very little vertical lift of the feet. None at all. Also, we see one knee lifted more than the other. Okay, it's almost like the character is limping a little bit. And I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. Looking at the left leg, it kind of looks like that leg is twitching a little bit, like she would have a sore leg or something, okay? Okay, what else? Uh, we talked about hand movements, we talked about shoulder rotation. Not a lot of shoulder rotation going on. We see the shoulders moving from left to right. Hardly no rotation backwards and forwards, okay? All right, so what else? We'll move forward. Like I said, this movement is not too bad. I, I like the uh, tilt of the head. I like the tilt of the upper body, very natural. Uh, we talked about the leg movement there. Let's move forward to the middle cycle. Now here, a whole different ball game and I'll just uh, play that for a minute. The feet very much are sliding, right? There's no lift, there's no real up pose, there's no real contact pose. It's literally almost skating on ice, as you can see that, right? Now, um, as a result of that, the whole body posture changes as well. Now, there is a lot more arm movement there. You see that little, uh, if we're looking at the character's right arm, as soon as we have this slight up pose, you see that little bend in that arm there? Very nice, very subtle. Uh, again, here I would tuck in the fingers, maybe uh, bring in that hand but this has a much more lateral flow to it with the exception of those feet sliding, right? Um, from the front view, a lot more tilting of the shoulders going up and down, as you can see here, hip as well. Not a lot, but a little, but it works, which is good. So all in all, I would say this looks a little bit better. Now, um, that is maybe from a technical standpoint, but most importantly, what I would like to emphasize here is when you're doing a walk cycle, uh, you need to incorporate what your story is. So what is the walk cycle for? I mean, everybody understands that uh, creating a walk cycle for someone who is uh, five feet tall and weighs 200 pounds will look different than somebody who is six feet four and weighs 100 pounds, right? So um, take into account the age of the person, whether it's male or female, whether the person is tall or not, whether they are heavy or not, whether they are very uh, muscular or not. All of that has an effect. Now, the best way to achieve that is to study. Look at how people walk, uh, videotape your friends, have your friends videotape you, and uh, you know, just animation in general, you know, look in a mirror and, and check out how that is done, okay? Now, that's my two cents on um, this send-in here. Uh, hopefully, Danielle, this helped you in some way. Uh, before I sign off, one thing about the overall presentation, uh, of course, make sure that everything is working when you send it out. Um, in this case, you decided to uh, send uh, rig uh, characters. Uh, I don't know if there's a reason for that. Did you do the rigs yourself or not? Uh, if so, it uh, may be good to mention that in the clip. Uh, if not, it may be good to give credit to whoever did and uh, kind of give a backstory. Uh, this is a character in a, a clip uh, playing the role of so-and-so and, uh, you know, a little kind of profile to set that up, right? So that's basically it. Uh, if you have any work you want me to review online, uh, please send it to mikehermes at mhtutorials.com and I will be happy to do so. So have a great day, guys, uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.